Good morning all, it's basic circuit time and uh, oh, no, try again. And uh, today I thought I'd do experiment 13, direction change indicator. I'll print it out big. So yeah, this is an interesting circuit because we've got uh, the two LEDs, the green and the red, strapped directly across the three volt battery, so two alkaline cells there and then we've got two transistors um, an NPM which is actually on the high side and a PMP which is on the low side well I suppose effectively shorting out each LED in turn because I presume by adjusting this pot which hasn't been drawn very well has it um, you can make it quench one LED and then quench the other one the question is what happens if I just build this part of the circuit two LEDs and the battery. Are these things going to light up? Right, so 36 and 37 is the green LED. So now they put the switch here in the negative battery side. I suppose there's nothing wrong with that. No reason why you can't switch the negative side. So that goes in there. We'll put a little white wire linking these two LEDs. They're both in series. So we've got three volts across two LEDs. Now what's the voltage across LEDs, well they'll probably start to light up at one point something. They're going to get um, approximately 1.5 volts each, assuming they have uh, roughly the same forward voltage drop. Um, I think it should be safe to just strap these across the power supply. Uh, so this one goes on to battery positive, which is up there. Let's switch on. And the green one comes on, but the red one doesn't. Uh, that's a bit weird. Actually, that can't happen, can it? Because um, any current flowing through the green LED must also be flowing through the red LED. In fact, it would have to be an identical amount of current. So uh, given that amount of current, the green should emit um, an amount of light. The red should emit a very similar amount of light, but it ain't. The red one's not coming on at all. I think we've got a problem with the red LED. Right, I think I'm going to have to take this panel off the kit and uh, replace that LED with a working one. So I need a screwdriver. Um, I mark my screwdrivers with little bits of heat shrink. Black means uh, flat bladed. Red means cross point. That's my code anyway. Right, let's start undoing these screws. See if I can get this front panel off um, to repair this electronic set. I never thought that I was gonna have to actually repair this in order to get this very simple circuit working. Uh, right, well that's sort of coming out, but not coming out. So there must be something preventing it coming out. And under the back cover, which is just some corrugated cardboard, yes, we can access all the bits and pieces. Yeah, and the front panel won't come out because um, the switch there is screwed onto a little piece sticking out. Um, the I think that's the key press switch also seems to be somewhat attached to uh, this thing. I think that's the power amp, the audio power amp. Uh, what is that? It's a TDA something. Yeah, it's just one of these little audio power amp chips. Uh, this is the FM receiver module. That's a variable capacitor and the pot actually seems to be in a little plastic housing. That's interesting. Right, this is the red LED, so they've wrapped the legs around the springs like that. So let's take that out. Oh, it's got very long legs. I'm not sure whether my replacement LED is going to have legs quite that long. But yeah, that's definitely dud. In fact, you can see that um, it's all black in there. So at some point, I don't know whether it was me, um, somebody's burnt that LED out, so yeah, that one's definitely duff. So my kit of uh, 3mm and 5mm LEDs, I've got a, a 5mm red there. Let's uh, make sure that's the right way around. And, um, oh, that's a bit rubbish, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, these legs aren't anything like as long, but that's fine. I'll just lift the spring up a bit. Good, that looks pretty tight. Let's see if that works. And now all I've got is two LEDs in series again. 
with the power supply and now neither of them is working so we must have a problem with the green LED what is going on right I've hoiked out the green LED let's get <laughs> that's fallen off now let's get a green replacement and put that in the circuit I kind of want the new LEDs because they're probably brighter than the old LEDs the new LEDs being a bit more efficient probably uh, yeah let's match the LEDs switch on and that doesn't work either yeah this was supposed to be uh, an easy build not insanely difficult right the new red has a forward voltage of 1.71 volts the new green has a forward voltage of 1.822 let's try the old ones the old red which is burnt out Oh, 0.2. Ah, that's interesting. Yes, that's gone very... So that was why the green was lighting up. Now, what's the old green one? Uh, it will be that way around. Well, that one seems to be okay. And with a forward voltage of 1.78. So if this had a forward voltage of 1.78 ish as well would they light up on three volts these ones don't seem to so here's one of the battery packs from that set uh, three volts i've got my two leds and they don't light up if they'd stay still they won't light on three volts let's go a bit higher um, i've got some of these energizer lithiums which I think, uh, oh, they're dated 2021. Yeah, they're still in date. I think these are about 1.6 volts. So they're a bit higher voltage than alkalines. So okay. let's put those ones in and try that. See if these LEDs light up. No, they don't even light up on 3.2 volts. Hmm. Right, so back to alkalines in there. This is switched on. Neither of the LEDs is lit. But what I've got here is the 100 ohm resistor. And I'm going to put it first across the red. Thus sort of reducing its, well, reducing its voltage, forward voltage. That turns the green on. If I put it across the green. And yeah, that turns the red on. So yeah, they're not meant to light up on 3 volts. Okay. <laughs> Still not sure about this circuit though, because if one of these transistors, I mean they're quite small transistors, but if one of them turns on quite hard, it shorts out one of the LEDs. That still puts the other LED directly across three volts. It's going to put quite a lot of current through that LED. Anyway, let's wire it up. Let's um, put the two transistor collector emitters across the uh, LEDs first. So I've got 28 collector of the uh, NPN to positive emitter of the NPN to this midpoint now I want emitter of the PNP also to this midpoint so that's 37 to uh, 29 that goes there and then another wire is 31 which is collector of the PNP which goes to the most negative point which is there now of course neither of these transistors is on at the moment right now i'm going to link the two bases of the transistors there with a short link wire because it just goes across there uh, then that point goes to that 5.1k resistor so that goes to 56 uh, yeah that's right 55 goes to the center of the pot 55 to the center of the pot and then it's a question of attaching uh, the two outer terminals of the pot to positive and negative of the battery so let's do this logically let's have 65 goes to positive oh they've got that anyway 65 goes to positive now we can turn the green one on oh, i can't turn it off but i can dim it slightly with the pot and 63 the other side of the pot goes to the most negative point which is there and now i can oh that's very bright isn't it 
And yes, now I can turn them both off by going to the midpoint. Uh, go positive and the green LED comes on, which is this bottom LED. Positive, yes, we'll turn on the NPN, shorting out the red LED. Go negative and that will turn on the PMP. Now the PMP is a higher power transistor, so maybe that's why the red one is brighter, but that is pretty bright, isn't it? It wouldn't take long, I don't think, to burn that one out because um, we've got sort of unbalanced transistors. When I say we've got unbalanced transistors, you can see that the PMP, the Nero one there, is really tall. Uh, I can't remember the number of it now, uh, but it's a higher power transistor. I'm sure I looked this up last time. The NPN at the far side there is a much smaller little thing. This uh, description here is just gibberish, really. It just says, wire it all up, turn the pot to the left, the red LED will light up, turn the pot to the right, and the green LED will light up. And then it says, uh, this principle can be used for indicating the change of direction of automobile. Well, it can't really. It doesn't flash. So yeah, that caught me out, didn't it? Um, I should have recognised that from my own decoy circuit, where the voltage of the power supply is insufficient to light up the LEDs when they're strung directly across it, because their combined forward voltages are effectively greater than the power supply. Only then by quenching one of them out by putting a transistor or having a transistor turned on across it does the other one light up but there's still no current limiting in this circuit it's all a bit worrying unless the current limiting of course is here um, base 5.1k on the base not sure what the gain of these transistors is but maybe um, that set limits the current flowing collector emitter in both of these transistors and I suppose we could test that because that's a 5.1k. Um, if we move these wires down to the 10k resistor, we can see if that reduces the brightness of the LEDs. Doesn't seem too much. Let's go down to the 100k resistor. That's surely got to have an effect. Oh yes, they're much dimmer with a 100k resistor in the two bases of the transistors that's not going to blow up, is it? So there it is, experiment 13, direction change indicator. That was actually more fun than I was expecting it to be. Cheerio.